Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Mile Higher Podcast, episode 209. Today, we are here to have a little fun, to have some laughs. Yes. And to tell you about some of the dumbest criminals in the world. This is a part of our dumbest criminal series that we do yes. here at Mile Higher. If you haven't heard these episodes before, mm -hmm. these are some of our favorite because, like you yeah. just said, we get to have some laughs at the expense of some of the <laughs> dumbest <laughs> criminals on the planet and today we have some especially dumb ones to go over mm -hmm. some very very mm -hmm. dumb crimes here yeah funny a lot of them are from florida no surprise there yeah. i love you florida what the hell's going on down there's there some <laughs> must be the heat it must be i know like half the time when you see some crazy story in the news it's like florida florida man yeah yeah oh yeah florida man yeah not surprising <laughs> today josh is actually going to be leading the episode and kind of telling me about these dumb criminals because I am You're very pregnant. I am very pregnant people. I am now 34 weeks and yeah, I've had only, what, what a month out from. Yeah. Well, hopefully less. they're telling me it might be sooner because I've had not dangerous blood pressure levels, but I've had elevated blood pressure and we're kind of monitoring it. But yeah, they told me to be prepared to go at 37 weeks. So that's like three weeks from now. Right. Which just on that note, too, because I don't think we've brought this up at all for those that are listening and have, you know, are kind of up to date with all the latest episodes. We will be taking two weeks off at least from the yeah. show. It might be more than that, but there is at least two weeks where there won't be an episode going. Up yeah. And in August, there might. I'm definitely going to be off for at least a month. If right. Not longer. Right. But Josh may be here. Without yeah, me. there might be a few episodes that are going to be just me going through some some cases, things like that. Mm -hmm. And we'll be recording out of our house. And yeah. So out of our basement again. Which that could be soon. That could be as soon as next week that we will be recording in the basement in our little home yeah, setup. Yeah, we're, we're kind of creating a little home studio again. Yeah, yeah. Because I really back. just need to be taking it more easy. Um, I'm getting really out of breath. My lungs are squished. All yeah. my organs are squished. So just reading is really hard. Speaking for long periods of time is getting harder. So I don't know if I'll be um, fully co-hosting for, I don't know. I mean, we'll see how I'm doing next week. But this week I've been pretty tired. My blood pressure has been pretty high. So I wanted to just kind of no sweat. Don't be worry here about for it. moral support and enjoy yeah. the dumb criminals with you guys. And Josh is really going to take the lead. Sounds good to me. Yep. I'm excited for my baby, for one. <laughs> I'm very excited for my baby. Yes, we uh, are to be very a father. Excited. So that's very exciting. Obviously, a little nerve nerve wracking at the same time mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. we've been kind of doing this together for a long time, and so we're interested to see how she sort of shakes everything up for us and oh, if yeah. she impacts her schedule and everything. We're kind of, you know, things are kind of up in the air as to. Mm -hmm. how everything will move forward but yeah we're just taking it day by day at this point but we're very excited about making baby merch oh yeah yeah we're we're looking at making some baby merch oh, with yeah. some onesies which I would be great that. so we can dress our daughter in some mile higher <laughs> apparel <laughs> we've been getting so many requests to make onesies out of our merch and we've never i i feel like we did maybe once upon a time we did like a very basic no i don't onesie. think we ever did mm -mm. No, maybe we didn't. Maybe that was something we thought about. Well, now yeah. we're definitely going to because we're yeah. going to dress our own child. And she's she's Mile a fan. Merch. She's got to be a fan of mom and dad, right? Exactly. But if you want to dress yourself in Mile Higher merch, <laughs> go check out MileHigherMerch.com because we just released our summer collections for all yes, of our shows. We did. So Mile Higher, Lights Out, The Sesh. Mm -hmm. uh, Kendall also has some uh, items that she's released under her own collection. Yes. And we'll be expanding upon that. Yeah, I have a couple of items that just like some basic logo type stuff that are available for my channel. I'm going to be expanding on that. But right now I do have a collection that we are running for National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. And 100% of the proceeds is being donated to them. So definitely take advantage of that. We'll have a link specifically to that below. Yeah, yeah, that's a really cool cause that uh, we're supporting and all of you mm -hmm. are, have been buying the merch so far have been supporting yeah. as well which is really cool so yeah. thank you to those of Big you out there you. who've already purchased something mm -hmm. we really do appreciate it again this is family run family owned that's right it's very very appreciated whenever you guys buy something from malhar merch because it does 
you know, support the business, supports the family, and of course mm-hmm. the causes that we we all love. So definitely check that out. Again, that's milehighmerch.com. We ship everywhere. Mm-hmm. So wherever you're at, we should be able to get it to you. And we're working very, very hard to get those orders out. If you're still waiting for an order, it is coming to you very, very soon. It's usually about two to four business days before we can get out of the warehouse, depending on the volume. It's been really heavy with the launch and everything. So Mm -hmm. uh, be patient. It will be coming to you very soon. So thank you so much. But this episode of Mile Higher Podcast is brought to you by Stitch Fix, ExpressVPN, HelloFresh, and Dipsy. Mm -hmm. Mm, More on that later. So our first dumbest criminal comes out of Lakeland, Florida. So this crime happened earlier this month on the night of June 7th around 3 a.m. Two burglars broke into the store called Ronnie's Carpets after one of the thieves smashed in the front window with a crowbar. The first thief then made his way into the store and in the back he found a very heavy safe. He was struggling pretty hard to get it out of the store and once he finally did, the second thief that was with him struggled to get the safe from the door to the getaway car. And there's actually some video footage of them in the store dragging the safe across the floor. Some music. great little music. <laughs> this is great. Boom. Smashes the front. Love that. Door. The music's perfect for this. So they go in. They're looking through drawers of desks, see if there's anything of value. Which I'm like, go into Ronnie's carpet. Yeah. He's got the, the diamonds, the jewels there. <laughs> I know, of all the places. <laughs> like, he's just like, file folders. There's got to be money here. Oh, here's the safe. Oh. It's, <laughs> it's this big big. black metal, probably solid Dude, steel. Dude, that thing's got to weigh like... 400 pounds. Ah. <laughs> it's like, shit, but I've gone this far. The thieves are dressed in all black, of course. Black face masks on, so you can't really see any identifying features of them. Mm. Pick it up, pick it up. <laughs> They're going to try to roll it. Dude, those things weigh so much. Yeah. Oh my, and this is just all on video too. This is great. <laughs> He's like, oh, sure. if I throw it on its side this way, I can slide it. Who's recording this video? <laughs> Oh, yeah, because it seems like it's moving. Oh, it is yeah. kind of moving. It's like someone's holding it. I think it might be the way that this is edited. Oh, Somebody's like okay. editing it. Or maybe Ronnie was controlling the cameras. <laughs> He's remote. <laughs> He's like, look at these fools. So the second guy is not all decked out in uh, black. He's wearing shorts, tank top. It's and hot. He's, it's Florida. He's trying to push it across <laughs> the asphalt parking lot. <laughs> all right, back up the getaway. How are they going to get this thing in the car? Wow. Really no planning. Amazing. Oh man! The music. Drive <laughs> stoppers. Who are these guys? Oh my god! So they were they were able to load up the safe into their car and make mm. their getaway, and they probably thought, "Man, this thing's so heavy. It's probably filled with so much money. We just got rich." <laughs> but what they didn't know is that this safe that they just hauled out of the store was completely empty. <laughs> completely nice. empty. That's amazing. No cash, no valuables. There's literally nothing in it. Oh, I wish we had video of their faces oh when they God. opened it. I know, it. right? That's what police said, too. They're like, we wish we could see what their faces were when they just committed oh, this burglary for covered nothing. Covered in sweat. They're like, yes, at least we did it. They probably thought there was, it was so heavy because there's so much money in it. <laughs> Gold coins. <laughs> Ronnie's just Ronnie's carpets is like, that's why we put it there. <laughs> wow. As a decoy. Wow. So yeah, they are mm, still uh, Ronnie's smart. Still out there, unidentified. But it, really, uh, uh, yeah, they haven't caught these guys. But well, I guess we can't call them the dumbest then, if they manage to not get caught. Mm, for that, just dumb. dumb as in like a waste of time. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> imagine going not to jail. A lot of though. planning. Imagine going to jail and like being in general population, and people are asking like, <laughs> like, hey man, what what are you in here for? Well, I broke into this carpet store and stole this safe, but there's nothing in it. Now I'm here for five years. Well, he doesn't have to because they got away. That's true, but they'll get caught. I mean, eventually. They've probably been on to other crimes. Maybe. I don't know. Other empty They seem safes. very, very dumb. <laughs> this next clip uh, we're going to look at was one that I actually saw. I want to say I saw it on TikTok or maybe it was an uh, Instagram reel. But this is coming out from Port Arthur, Texas. Ooh. And... This came from April Fool's Day of this year, actually. Ooh, so the fools are out for Fool's Day. Uh, the night of April 1st, a man named Marcus Hubbard broke into a house's garage and started rummaging around inside. He then walked into the garage and came back out with a bicycle. He propped the bicycle up on a fence and went back into the garage for some more stuff. Then Marcus emerges from the garage with a lawnmower. He then went back into the garage again, and this time he came out with a gas can, and he actually started fueling up the lawnmower. And instead of just stealing the mower, he actually started mowing the homeowner's lawn. What? 
<laughs> literally fuels it up and <laughs> mows it. Mows the lawn for him. Okay, so is he trying to test it out or do something nice for the homeowner because he feels bad? Uh, I think he was doing something nice. It was like, mm. if I take your bike, I'll mow your lawn. <laughs> Give you enough time to yeah. get a new one. Here's a video of, of Marcus here. And that well, shit's that's loud. Courteous. Oh, yes. Yeah. Cops in Texas say this man stole a lawnmower. But before he made off with his oh, loot, come he mowed on. his victim's grass. This video of the incident was captured at a home in Port <laughs> Arthur. Police say Marcus, yeah, Howard Marcus. entered the residential building Marcus. last month nice and removed the mower without the owner's He's like, consent. oh man, I feel wow. bad. He then proceeded to mow the front Maybe he just loves to mow lawns. Property. When he like mows the Austin, whole thing too. And he's like doing it row by row by row. <laughs> he's good at it. it was Hell yeah. Interesting. So... Hmm. Many so, questions. <laughs> Many questions. So here. the homeowners, of course, heard the lawnmower go. So they were like, "What the hell? Somebody broke in. Is mowing our lawn now?" <laughs> they call. Mower. They call nine one one, and Marcus was actually still outside mowing the lawn when the police showed up. <laughs> oh man. Okay, he must have been under the influence of something. To or get, he must have been confused. It's just April Fool's. So he was like trying to do the ultimate April Fool's joke. I feel like. But what kind of joke is that to? Like, haha, I mowed your yeah, lawn for they, you. So, so yeah, so what you were alluding to, the police think this was a drug induced crime, which he uh, got away. Mm -hmm. He got away. When the police showed up, he ran into an alley and took off. And oh. Did he take the mower? He took the mower too. <laughs> He's like, I'm not leaving without this. That's amazing. Okay. So, I wonder if he originally broke in to get them to, you know, steal the lawnmower. He's got a thing for lawnmowers. Or maybe he was looking for something else. But then he, like, at some point, kind of lost track of reality and was like, I need to mow the lawn. Or he just thought, He looked like, like he was just like, there's no rushing. He's just casually doing it. In that clip, there's that one point where he stops and is talking to somebody, but nobody's there. Uh, so he was, yeah. like, definitely in an Confused. altered state of consciousness gotcha. there. And that I think sense. he, I mean, who knows what he really thought he was doing, but... yeah. He could have yeah. thought that that was his house and maybe he just was like, kind of get the lawnmower out and mow his lawn, not without realizing that it was somebody else's Aww. house. Marcus was just trying to do him a favor. But uh, yeah, the police are still trying to find Marcus. They issued what? an arrest warrant for burglary. And they also put up the video on Facebook, which is where it went viral, hoping someone locally will be able to tell them where Marcus is. And <laughs> a lot of people were leaving comments on the post asking for Marcus to come to their house and mow their lawn. <laughs> Seriously, one, it's nice. One person wrote, I keep the mower out back in the shed. It's unlocked. Make sure you hit the flower beds also. <laughs> <laughs> Another person awesome. said, I'd like to give the suspect my address, please. Is there a new street drug that compels you to do yard work? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> one person even asked, is he some sort of guardian yard angel? Aww. I wish I would wake up and find he has done my hedges. <laughs> wow. He could start a whole business. Yeah, police haven't caught Marcus yet. Seriously? Mm -mm. They have a picture of him. Well, I think he's been arrested prior. I think that's a prior mugshot of him. Huh. Well, they really want to get him anyway. I mean, yeah, I well, I guess say. he stole Well, the, the homeowners are pissed. They're like, he broke into our garage. True. But he mowed your lawn. Yeah. Whatever. Come on. He did you guys a solid. What would you do in that situation if you guys were the homeowners and someone came in and you mm. saw footage of that and you're fucking simply safe? Well, <laughs> I mean... For real, it'd probably freak me out for yeah. sure that someone like was able to get into the garage. I wouldn't be that concerned about like a mower, but unless we had some really nice mower. But would you want the police to continue to pursue or would you be like, eh, just, just let it go? Uh, I'd probably say just let it go because I'd feel bad for him. He's clearly confused and it's yeah. pretty nice. I mean, it just depend. I would depend on who the person was too. If they had a prior of prior past of like violent con convictions if or someone, something like, dangerous, yeah, yeah. If they were like assaulting That's people, true. or if they're just like a drug user and they just yeah had a confused moment. But at the same time, I mean, it's like you don't really want even if you are, you know, high on drugs, you don't want to be. You don't want those kind of people just breaking into homes. Well, you don't want anyone just breaking <laughs> into your home. But true, I mean, true. He, it's like. Oh no, it's hard. It was kind of nice, and he did he did do a good job. Nice, even lines. Yeah, I was yeah. gonna say. Mm, I don't know. What would you guys do? <laughs> I can't believe they haven't caught him. That is surprising. Yeah, I know. I know. You'd be surprised at how many people get away from the police. That's it's a lot. But this next incident we're gonna be talking about happened over in Perth, Australia. Oh, in going Aussie. down under. Yes. 
Can you do the entire story in an accent, please, Josh? Oh, no. You don't want to hear that. <laughs> He's so bad at accents. Really? We're both awful. Yeah, I was going to say. Can you try the first line? <laughs> yeah, let's hear your best oh, shot. Oh, God. Australian? God. I'll probably just sound like hillbilly, honestly. Um, <laughs> hillbilly? Yeah, what? Um, That's how bad his accents are. I won't sound anything like Australians on are classy. August 5th, 2019. <laughs> A 29-year-old... Oh, that doesn't that was sound like Australian. almost South African, I feel like. <laughs> 2019. A 29-year-old man broke into Champion Lakes Tavern <laughs> in Terrible. Kamalo through the bar's air vent. Oh. He actually fell through the roof of the bar and then opened a bottle of liquor to start off the night right. Hell yeah. You gotta love when you start your crime off with a nice bottle. <laughs> That's right. You're like, if, <laughs> That's I'm gonna, if I'm going down, I'm gonna go down drunk. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But at some point, the burglar realized that he couldn't get out of the bar. Shit. And this really pissed him off. But it looks like he was like, you know what? I'm going to make, I'm just going to throw a party then if I'm stuck in here. <laughs> so here's some footage of him drinking from bottles of liquor. A master criminal. Master or maybe criminal. Not. This oh, thief fell through, through the, the ceiling into the Champion Lakes Tavern at Camillo, then got the party started with a uh, bottle of spirits, <laughs> kicking off a big night ahead. Got into the pub bottle of Jack? and uh, he couldn't get out. Pub to himself, the 29-year-old man from Armadale gets to work. He starts remodelling, tipping over <laughs> chairs, remodeling. drink in hand, takes a moment to rehydrate with the beer taps, oh, and then decides ooh, more chairs right need from to the go. Tap. Over the next few hours, he causes all sorts of damage, including tipping over the TAB machine and ruining the tills. He's gone through and destroyed everything. Smashed, I think it's about seven windows. Damn. Bottles are everywhere. He's All pissed. tucked out, he passes out on the pool table before <laughs> it's time to go shopping. There's no customers about, and the booze is <laughs> free. Shopping cart. He fills a trolley, Stop. making sure to line his stomach on the way. Pop potato chips, he had a few of them, must have been hungry. And decides to leave <laughs> his ill Australians attitude. are so he cool, the they're just like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Have a mate. A little kip, has a go at the fire extinguisher, oh, damn. but then realises he wasn't so clever. And there's no way out. What a wild night. He can't get out. All I could hear was cries from inside. Let me out. Let me out. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Police start through the park. Oh, man. To our would-be cat burglars eventful night out. He was charged with stealing and destruction of property. The owner's estimate he caused $50,000 worth Damn. of damage. Damn. But they're taking it in good spirits. Of He's course. laughing. He's like, for a shot at the title of Honestly, good, uh, criminal. good, good publicity for... Definitely. right? Yeah. Champion Lakes Tavern. Mm, yeah, shout out to them. Go check them out if you're in Australia. They had a post on Facebook. They're like, due to unfortunate circumstances, events that have unfolded throughout the night, Champion Lakes Tavern is closed until further notice. Repairs are underway. We'll be back on our feet and operational in no time. We thank everyone for their support throughout these events. Man, we I look love forward to seeing your smiling faces soon. So They're positive. So, sweet. so chill. God, he was so mad. The way he was acting, he had such anger behind all his like behind breaking things and mm -hmm. wrecking How did everything. He get in? You would think he had some type of beef with the owner or like had a bad experience there. He seemed so mad and yeah. so purposeful with what he was doing, but he was just having a crazy time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering how he even got in. How did like, he get up? Yeah, well, he went through the air him. vent, but then how did he get up there? Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Like, Why didn't he try to go back out through the air vent? Because it was like, it was like the in the ceiling. middle of the ceiling. So, oh, yeah. But then I was like, why wouldn't you climb on a bunch of shit and try and like get up now? This seems like maybe well, another drug induced crime. <laughs> well, yeah, or he, he was drunk. Or alcohol yeah. induced. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that Hell was, yeah. That was pretty wild. $50,000 in damage in one night. Could you imagine you're doing all these things? And Hopefully then... his uh, business insurance covers that. Yeah, for real. I'll ask my agent if somebody drunk breaks into my office and destroys everything if I'm covered. Obviously. This might sound kind of weird, but it, it honestly kind of looks fun. Like, you know those to rooms, those places oh. where you go wreck everything, you mm -hmm. break a bunch of shit? Like, it's kind of my fantasy mm -hmm. to be able to just break a ton of stuff. They have one of those by us, kind of. What are yeah. they called? Break rooms? But you're no. meant to break everything. <laughs> break <room. laughs> <laughs> what are Get those it? called? Uh, I don't know. Let me look. Smashing. Wouldn't that be fun? Places. When I'm not Please pregnant, will you take me to one? Things. I really want to go just break some shit. It looks so fun. You get your anger out. He looked like he was getting his anger out. Yeah. A rage room. A rage, a rage room. room. And you can do it room. safely and legally yeah. without harming a business. Yeah. Kind of what fun. fun is that? 
Yeah, it's more fun to fuck someone else's shit up <laughs> than the yeah. rage rooms. I guess so. It'd be more of a You're like in a rage room. Rush. Is just, yeah, exactly. You're like, this is somebody else's. Yeah, stuff. until you can't get out. Yeah, <laughs> I would be so stressed out too, just thinking of the amount of damage I'd be causing and what the bill would be continuing to go up. <laughs> e. That was a that's a funny one though. So the next incident we're gonna get into is about a car chase that happened in England. And we'll get right into that one after we come back from our first ad break. You know, you're allowed to switch things up when you feel like it. Yesterday, you were jamming to country music. But today, maybe you're into a throwback playlist. Maybe your go-to dessert is normally creme brulee. But lately, you've been feeling like having some cake. Well, with Dipsy, you can choose what feels good in the moment. Dipsy is an app full of hundreds of short, sexy audio stories designed for women by women. They bring scenarios to life with immersive soundscapes and characters, no matter what you're into or what turns you on. Find stories about that intriguing coworker with a British accent or hooking up with your hot yoga instructor. They even have stories designed specifically for your zodiac sign, which is really cool. And new content is released every single week. So in between listening to your favorite stories again and again, you can always find something new to explore. Dipsy also has sleep stories, wellness sessions, and now they also offer written stories. Dipsy is your go-to place to spice up your me time, explore your fantasies, or heat things up with a partner. And for listeners of Mile Higher, Dipsy is offering an extended 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash milehigher. That's 30 days of full access for free when you go to D-I-P-S-E-A stories.com slash milehigher. Dipsystories.com slash milehigher. These days, I am super, super busy. I have so much going on between work, preparing for my little baby girl coming very, very soon, and all the things that need to get done around the house, the pets, it's endless. And the last thing I have time for is getting my ass to the grocery store and getting all the food ingredients I need to make meals for the entire week. Well, HelloFresh has absolutely saved our family and will continue to far into the future because they make it so easy to get all of the ingredients you need to make delicious home-cooked meals in 30 minutes or less, which is amazing. HelloFresh allows you to choose from 55 plus weekly options featuring pre-portioned high quality ingredients picked at peak ripeness. I gotta say, I've been using HelloFresh for a long time, never have gotten any sort of rotten produce, which is honestly pretty incredible for a meal service that delivers through the mail. HelloFresh delivers fresh quality produce from the farm to your door in less than a week, so you can savor summer flavors from home. You can select meals from the Taste of Summer series that are sure to become everyone's new favorites, like the Old Bay Shrimp and Sausage Boil. Mmm, gotta get down on some some shrimp and sausage boil, that sounds good. Our family style grilled steak lettuce wraps. Ooh, oh, so good, my mouth is watering just thinking about it. So skip the grocery store and spend more time soaking up the summer sun and spend time with your family and less time at the nasty grocery store. I mean, there's always too many people there. I always worry to pick up some sickness while I'm there. Now you can just stay at home and it's all shipped right to your door, fresh, ready to go. Plus HelloFresh is 72% cheaper than dining at a restaurant, so no need to go out anymore. It's even cheaper than shopping at the grocery store, so that's more money and time back in your wallet. So what are you doing? Make the switch to HelloFresh today and go to hellofresh.com slash milehar16 and use code milehar16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. Mm, you're probably wondering what those three free gifts are. Well, you gotta go to hellofresh.com slash milehar16 and use code milehar16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. All right, so this car chase in England took place when police tried to pull over an Audi A7 for reckless driving. Mm. But the driver of the car wouldn't pull over. He kept police going on a 35-mile chase that started in southwest London. And at one point, the cops even had to call in a police helicopter to help stop the driver. The chase finally ended in Minster, Kent, when the driver ran out of gas. And the driver was a 21-year-old man who lived in the area when the police were finally able to identify him. And the cops searched the car and found a big bag of weed inside of it. But the story gets even weirder. The driver didn't have insurance on the car, and when the police asked him for a driver's license, he gave them one. But the license wasn't issued by the government. It was actually issued by Legoland. <laughs> what? Legoland. <laughs> no way. Legoland? Yeah, the driver actually gave the police a driver's license from Legoland that he got Legoland in 2003. Legoland Driving School. <laughs> <When he laughs> from 2003. Three yeah. years old. <laughs> wow. He hung on that I hung on to it for a while then. Yeah, you don't have... Like from his childhood. Yeah, three years old when he got it. Oh, amazing. <laughs> In order to pass the test, you don't have to actually uh, 
take a driver's test at Legoland to get a license, but kids just drive around a small electric car built out of Legos around traffic lights, roundabouts, Lego policemen, <laughs> and even a speed camera. That's awesome. And for whatever reason, the English police did not accept his Legoland driver's license, oh, and bummer. he was subsequently arrested and charged on suspicion of dangerous driving, failing to stop, possession of a Class B drug, and driving with no insurance, and of course, driving without a valid license. Come on. Lego land is valid. How high are you, bro? It's like when someone, I've done this before, where someone asks for my ID and I hand them my Costco card. Oh, yeah. Really? They're like, um, like I literally went to a brewery once, like, ID, I was like, yeah, and I gave them the Costco, and they're like, um, this is a Costco card. I was like, oh. All right, this next one has to do with an incident with Frontier Airlines. So on July 31st, 2021, 22-year-old Maxwell Berry Got on a Frontier Airlines flight from Philadelphia to Miami. Oh boy, I think I know about this motherfucker. Mm. The flight was set to take off from Philly at 10.41 p.m. and land in Miami about two and a half hours later. But this flight was not going as planned at all. It looks like Max Berry had already had one too many drinks by the time he boarded the flight. But regardless, everyone boarded the plane and it took off on schedule. But it didn't take long for things to start going haywire. Max ordered his first alcoholic drink on the plane and then he ordered a second drink and then a third. But after he ordered his third drink, he brushed his empty cup on a flight attendant's backside, mm. her booty. We covered this we on the did? sesh. Yeah. Did you really? I'm pretty sure. Maxwell? What? You don't forget it, Maxwell. But the flight attendant warned him, sir, please do not touch me. After that, Max got his third drink, and then he spilled the drink all over himself. At one point, he went to the bathroom and came out shirtless. Oh, yeah. And that's when some of the other passengers started to step in as Max was starting to get pretty rowdy. One of the flight attendants told Max that he needed to get dressed. She even helped him look through his luggage for a new shirt. But the craziness was only just beginning on this flight. After he put his shirt on, Max started walking around the plane for 15 minutes. He was pretty much just causing chaos and acting unruly. But things got worse. At one point, he groped another one of the flight attendant's boobs. Mm -hmm. She told him not to touch her and demanded that he get back to his seat. But Max didn't do that. He put his arms around the two female flight attendants and groped both of their breasts. Disgusting. But Max's rampage didn't stop there. He actually started yelling things like, My parents are worth two million goddamn dollars. And <laughs> I'm white. <laughs> <Ew>. <laughs> I'm sorry I can't change that. Ew. Max was also shouting and cursing at other passengers. Yeah, don't you remember this guy yep, now? I Maximilian. Remember. Yep, Maximilian. Yeah, he was a spicy <laughs> topic. Communication. Are we going to you guys. Wow. He says fucking suck. Yeah. <laughs> Look how angry is his face is so red. Goddamn gallon. And you know what? You fucking... He must have had a lot to drink before he got on this flight. Because three in flight drinks doesn't get you this messed up. No, no. People are laughing. My grandpa is the most wholesome person. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. Hey, Maxwell. God. He sounds so lit. He's giving major frat boy, which I think, if I remember right, he is a frat boy. I believe so. Yep, representing his frat brothers very well today. Oh, so a male flight attendant's trying to like restrain him, and he close fist punches the guy. Oh, he is just gone. Then they the tape is they out restrain the him with packing tape. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love the energy the rest of the passengers are bringing here. Amazing. That's what you fucking get. Except for I'm pretty sure the flight attendant also got charged. 
I remember correctly. Well, yeah, I think there was a lot of pushback against yeah. this whole thing. Well, I'm pretty sure Frontier, Frontier got in trouble too. And we talked a lot about this on the sesh. Mm -hmm. Should they have like a different protocol in place yeah. or like a safe room that they can put someone in a timeout in right. an instant like yeah, this? Yeah, but, but they would have to then train flight attendants to like yeah. know how to restrain people. Yeah, and, it's not their job. Like then you got to pay them a lot more if they're going to also mm -hmm. be like law enforcement as well. Well, don't they always have... um. No, a, air marshals. No, no. there's not no. always an air marshal on the no. plane. That's a lie. Not no. always. No, I asked. Uh, I asked Tyler about this, and he said someone in our family. He who's said, a flight attendant. "Yeah, he said every now and then there's one on there because they'll tell the flight attendants, I believe, that they're on board. Mm. Um, but it's not every flight, which you would think there should be one on every yeah. flight. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when they start sexually harassing multiple yeah. flight attendants, they could really give a shit about." his comfort at that point no what yeah. else do they have to use right tape right. his ass up he's out of control so max was arrested as soon as the plane landed at miami national airport he was charged with three misdemeanor counts of battery he was taken to jail and released on a 1500 hundred dollar bond mm -hmm. and frontier actually put those flight attendants on paid leave after the incident and a lot of people were really upset by this decision including the largest union for u.s flight attendants frontier said that this was just part of their policy after an incident like this one um, and in 2021, there was a huge rise in cases of unruly passengers and assaults on flight attendants. Um, but like you said, Max was a frat boy from Ohio who had recently graduated from Ohio Wesleyan University. Ironically enough, the Greek organization on campus had awarded him a values oh, and yeah. action award <laughs> for being a perfect role model. <laughs> Love that. They're going to they're gonna take that one back. Oh, amazing. They also <sighs> said that Max was leading the fight to dismantle fraternity stereotypes. <laughs> that was that is reward. so How funny. How hilarious is that? Wow. He's like, my daddy! <laughs> 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 and my grandpa, too. <laughs> uh, but Maxie Boy went to court, pleaded guilty to those three counts of battery or assault, and he was actually sentenced to 60 days in jail. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> Honestly, though, 60 days, I mean, if you ever watch the show, 60 days in, 60 <laughs> days in at a, at a jail, mm, that's a good know, punishment though. for most people. Most people are going to get what they need out of those 60 days. But yeah, the flight attendant uh, that Max hit thought the sentence was too light. Yeah, it I was. So. He's, well, okay, it'd be one thing if he didn't sexually assault people, yeah, but he right. did. So fuck him. Yeah, agreed. Fuck him. He should have gotten at least a year. Trash. I, I know there's some flights where they don't even serve alcohol now. Really? Um, yeah, there's some airlines that don't. I'm surprised Frontier even serves air, uh, alcohol. Huh. Yeah, there's uh, there's I don't know which airlines it is or if it's just certain certain flights that don't serve it. But well, that's kind of annoying because a lot of people kind of need right. it. To One calm person down. ruins it for everybody. Yeah. Well, he was fucked up before he even got on the plane because you don't they don't give you that much. Isn't there like a limit, mm. like two or three drinks, or is know. it just kind of however much you're willing to pay know, for overpriced a alcohol? Question. I think maybe, I Josh, know. what you're thinking about is during COVID, no one was serving liquor. But oh. from what I can see, it's just like... Maybe I'm thinking like... Tur I think hmm. Turkish Airlines, Iraq I Airways, I Iran Air. Oh, okay. Air. Yeah. But didn't, I don't know. There, I feel like there was one airline where if you were in economy or something, you couldn't get I'm assuming alcohol. you can because it's but expensive. For purchase, they yeah. Yeah, it. they're like, whoever's willing to shell out this money for yeah. a tiny shooter of shitty alcohol, I mean, we'll take it. <laughs> Max. Max, gotta ruin the fun. Maximilian. Look at his fucking picture, though. <laughs> <laughs> the way he was screaming, for some reason, gives me Major Jake Paul. Totally. It just sounded like him. My daddy. <laughs> so bad. And then he said, my grandpa's a yeah. wholesome. <laughs> like, how dare you talk about my grandpa? <laughs> I'm sure people are just shit-talking him so much on that flight. So good. So good. Wow. All right, wow. what do we got next? So the next one is about 37-year-old Justin Hallett, who was a store manager at a furniture shop called Sofa King. And this shop is in Northampton, England. Hope I said that right. And they prided themselves on their low prices. Their slogan was actually, where the prices are Sofa King low. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> so, <laughs> I got it so fucking low. That's actually great marketing there. But even though the prices were low, the store still had to deal with thieves. And Justin had to deal with some pretty dumb ones on September 29th. 2012. It was a pretty normal day at the shop for Justin. That is up until a white van pulled up outside the shop and two men hopped out of the white van and ran inside. Justin couldn't believe his eyes when he saw the men grabbing a couch and running out of the store. And when they ran back in for another couch, Justin realized what was happening. 
there were three thieves hitting the store in broad daylight. Two were grabbing the furniture and one was acting as the getaway driver. Mm. The thieves loaded up the two brown couches worth about 400 pounds <laughs> each into the back of their van. But while they were trying to make their getaway, they failed to realize that they didn't close the van's back doors. Justin saw his opportunity and took it. He knew it was going to be risky, but he knew he needed to stop them. So he ran out of the store right up to the van. And since the doors were open, it was pretty easy for Justin to come right in and grab both of the couches out of the back. Literally pulls them out. And after the incident, Justin jokingly told a news reporter that he was probably going to get an employee of the month. The thieves took off that day empty handed thanks to his quick thinking. Mm. We're not totally sure, but it looks like those suspects haven't been caught yet. So the police over in England are still looking for them. Damn. But, but the store manager did say that he's going to give Justin a big bonus for Christmas. And he also said that the thieves must have been pretty desperate. After all, the shop's prices are so, so fucking low. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> I have so many questions here. Are they stealing these in order to then sell them and make more money or do they yeah. just need couches? Uh, I think if you're going to steal like that, it's probably to resell them for more money. But there's so many other things you could go and resell. It seems like a hard thing to steal. Yeah, too. Go steal Dude, some iPhones. Those, I was going to say. In broad daylight too. That's a lot of work for not a lot of return. And to not close the back doors or maybe the mm. what my thought is is that they couldn't close the doors because the couches like were sticking out a little bit or something. Oh, they were like, oh, well, fuck. And so when they, they stay so in. as they like sped off, the doors flew open because they weren't mm. latched shut. Like we got and then it that's when Justin far. was like, oh, sweet. I'm going to go as they're pulling away. I'm going to go jump in and pull them out real quick. Mm. But good for, good for Justin. He should get a bonus for that one. Yeah. I wonder if he got employee of the month. <laughs> he definitely <laughs> should have. Sofa King. Low. That's good. That's great. That's a really great slogan. Good. We've got three more dumbest criminals for you, including one about a woman who throws her boyfriend's mom's ashes out. We'll get into that one right after our what? last break. You guys, we all know that shopping for clothes can be very time consuming and very stressful. So why not let Stitch Fix do all the work so that you can spend more time doing things that you actually love? Because when it comes to looking good, Stitch Fix has you covered. You can say goodbye to endless browsing and hello to fresh picks curated for your size and taste specifically. It's easy and fun to get started. First, just take a few minutes to set up your Stitch Fix style profile and answer a few questions about what you like to wear, what you don't, and how open you are to trying new styles. Then Stitch Fix's expert stylist will go to work finding items exclusively for you. That's right, every piece is handpicked for you and is unique to your size, style, and your budget, making it the best way to discover clothes that make you look and feel your best. It's so convenient, you guys. Stitch Fix sends you five pieces that you just try on at home, you keep what you love, and you literally just send back what you don't. Shipping returns and exchanges are easy and free. Plus, there's no subscription required. You can try it once or set up automatic deliveries, and there are no hidden fees ever. Sign up for Stitch Fix and get this season's latest pieces for women, men, and kids. And I just want to point out that I have been using their maternity option lately and it has really come in clutch for me because shopping for maternity clothes is even worse than shopping for regular clothes as it turns out. So they have definitely made my life so much easier. So sign up today at stitchfix.com slash mile higher to get $20 off your first purchase. Again, that's stitchfix.com slash mile higher to get $20 off your first purchase. That's a limited time offer and you must purchase within two days of sign up. Watching Netflix without using ExpressVPN is like going to a casino and only being able to play on the slot machines. Why limit yourself like that? ExpressVPN is great for a lot of different uses. I've used it while traveling to help protect me while I go online on public Wi-Fi or at the hotel, coffee shops, things like that. I got to check my bank account, make sure I got enough money to get home. But ExpressVPN can also be used to unblock content on Netflix and other streaming services. For example, if you're like me and watch a lot of Netflix, maybe you've watched through everything there is to watch in the USA library, and maybe you're in the mood to watch Monty Python and the Holy Grail, and you're wondering where you can watch that. Well, actually, it's available on the Canadian Netflix content library. So you're like, hmm, how do I get access to the Canadian library for free? Well, here's how you do it. You just fire up your ExpressVPN app, whether you're on your TV or your computer, and select Canada, a server in Canada, hit connect, and then boom, just refresh your Netflix page, and all of a sudden, Netflix thinks that you're actually located in Canada, and before you know it, you're watching that amazingly good movie very, very easily and for free. And what's also great about ExpressVPN is that when you do connect to other country servers, 
You still have blazing fast speeds. You're able to stream in HD with zero buffering. And ExpressVPN is compatible with all your devices. It has servers in 94 different countries. You can gain access to thousands of new shows. It works with other streaming services as well, like YouTube, Hulu, etc. So be smart. Stop paying full price for streaming services and only getting access to a fraction of their content. Get your money's worth at expressvpn.com slash mile higher. And don't forget to use our link at expressvpn.com slash mile higher to get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. So the next dumbest crime we're going to look at took place in June 2020 when a 40 year old woman named Augustine Gladney got some horrible news. She found out that her 38 year old boyfriend, Ernest Smith, was cheating on her. Uh oh. According to Ernest, he and Augustine were dating at the time, but they weren't really on the best of terms. But Augustine was obviously incredibly angry to find out that her boyfriend had been cheating on her and she wanted to get revenge on him for what he did. So that's when she came up with a plan. Ernest's mother had passed away and her ashes were placed in an urn that Ernest kept inside his home in Fort Worth, Texas. Augustine decided to steal that urn and then she did something absolutely insane. She dumped the urn full of ashes into Lake Worth. Shut up. <laughs> Ernest, what? yeah, I mean, who does that? That's, oh my God. That's a savage way to get back at somebody. Yeah, and to their mom. Like, mm -hmm. what? Ernest noticed that the urn full of his mother's ashes was missing in June of 2020, but he hadn't realized that Augustine had dumped the ashes in a lake until May of 2022. That month, Ernest was at home with Augustine's daughter, who lived with him, but Augustine was out of the house at the time. But he actually overheard Augustine talking on the phone with her daughter and telling her about what she did with the ashes. Ernest wasn't able to get a hold of Augustine until a few days later. And when he did, she texted him and admitted to the crime. Ernest actually called the police and Augustine was arrested and charged with abuse of a corpse. If convicted, she faces a one-year sentence in prison and a maximum fine of $4,000. But there's actually a TikTok floating around social media that apparently shows Augustine dumping the ashes into a river. There's video of it. I believe this is actually just a comedian reenacting the crime, but it shows kind of how it would have went down. There's no sound because it'll get copywritten for the this music. This is from but... Meme God Alive. Ooh. Wow. So this is not her actually doing it, but someone pretending reenacting yeah, it. Supposedly. Okay. Just trying to get a viral moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. Yikes. But is that warranted for cheating? No. No. No fucking way. <laughs> you can't mess with someone's corpse. Or, yeah. I mean, out of all the things you could do. That is so to, fucked up. To take his mother's ashes and just dump them over. No, that's beyond. Well, it's like punishing his mother as well. And the rest of the family. That's just horrible. Yeah. Absolutely savage, man. That is. Ooh, not good. Not nope. good at all. So the next one is about a woman who burns the wrong car, thinking it was her ex's. Ooh, got uh, some scorned lovers here. Yeah, we do. On August 28, 2016, 19-year-old Carmen Chambly of Clearwater, Florida. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course, we're back in Florida. Was in a pretty bad mood. Carmen thought that her ex-boyfriend owed her $100, and she was pretty pissed off about it. So she decided she was going to do something about it. Carmen went out looking for her ex's car. She was carrying a beach bag with some sort of flammable liquid. And eventually she spotted a Honda Civic that she thought was her ex's. And she smashed the window. But it turns out it wasn't her boyfriend's car. It was some random person's Honda Civic. Oh, no. <laughs> Shut up. Carmen still hadn't realized that. And when she smashed the windshield, she actually gotten her own blood on the car. So that would then be used as DNA evidence. Carmen wanted to get rid of the blood that she had just spilled in the car. So she opened the trunk of it and lit it on fire. She also lit a rack on fire and shoved it in the gas can to spread the fire. There's what? a video of because Holy unlucky for her, shit. surveillance cameras recorded the whole incident. She just committed a crime. I mean, either way it would have been yeah. a crime, but oh my god. Thinking she was gonna try and, you know, get her <sighs> ex back, she just ended up burning she was some random person. Well, carry underwood, but <laughs> didn't really work <laughs> exactly, out. Exactly, exactly. Damn, she's so casual. That's a lot of flame. Yeah. Imagine being this poor person who's like, <laughs> what the fuck? My car. My car. Oh, she's all, this is a vibe for her though. Oh yeah, she's getting getting out all that anger. Mm-hmm. Wow. It's her big moment. Wow. <laughs> this random person when they came back to their car must have been like, what the fuck? 
So this car actually belonged to a man named Thomas Jennings. Oh no, Thomas. Who didn't know Carmen, of course. One of Thomas's roommates woke him up that morning and told him that his car was on fire. Oh, shit. They ran out with pots of water to try and put it out, but there was nothing they could do, so they called the police to help at the scene, and by the time they got there, the car was pretty much torched. But Thomas's day actually only got worse from there. He actually had an outstanding warrant in another county. So after he found out that he lost his vehicle, oh, he was taken God. to jail. As for Carmen, it actually took a little bit of time for police to find her, but after about a week... Of looking for her she was arrested and charged with second degree arson mm. one of her friends said that the rest was actually probably good for carmen yeah. she said that she was going down the wrong path in life and she hoped that her arrest would give carmen the chance to turn her life around it does for some people maybe it is what she needed yeah you can't clearly just... she needs some type of help that's crazy dumb is the word for that yeah <laughs> at least make sure how did she not know it wasn't his car like how close were the two of you how long were you in a relationship to get confused about what vehicle <laughs> yeah like i know pretty right stupid i know you wouldn't she didn't know which honda civic was his like, yeah you'd think she would have ridden in it before or <laughs> yeah. look through, at least look through the window or look at the license <laughs> yeah, plate just or confirm. something i don't know maybe it's just a blind rage though you know i guess i mean people do i mean things that are defy explanation yeah, all the cheating time cheating can really make you see red yep so our last dumbest crime is about an individual named Glenn K. Tripp. He is called the D.B. Cooper copycat, which Ooh. we haven't covered the story of D.B. Cooper on the podcast right. that we need to. We should. Um, basically the only individual who's ever hijacked a plane and gotten away with it and we've never found Who this is. individual, I believe. Yeah. So this individual, Glenn K. Tripp, in 1980, he was 17 years old and he boarded a flight in Seattle that was bound for Portland, Oregon. And as the plane taxied towards the runway, Glenn told a flight attendant that he had a bomb on him and he demanded $600,000, two parachutes, and the assassination of his boss. What? Yeah. Wait, what? The assassination of his boss? Mm-hmm. That was one of his demands. Uh, okay. The Is plane his boss on the plane? <laughs> I don't know. I think that was just something that he wanted. He said, if I'm going to blow this plane up with the bomb that I have, Unless my boss is assassinated and I get $600,000 in two parachutes. Okay. Yeah. So the plane came to a halt and FBI agents quickly arrived at the plane to start negotiating with Glenn. Glenn was telling some of the flight attendants about his life when one of them had a brilliant idea. When Glenn wasn't looking, the flight attendant slipped three Valium pills in his drink. Mm. Again, this is back in 1980, so different time. After that, the negotiations with Glenn got a little bit more relaxed uh, after those values. I bet it did. <laughs> Three of them. Yeah. <laughs> he ended up releasing all 52 passengers from the plane after the FBI agreed to his new demands, which were three cheeseburgers, a car, <laughs> a car to escape in, and a head start out of the <laughs> runway. <laughs> oh, man. That's awesome. Once the car arrived, Glenn walked off the plane and was immediately arrested by the FBI. Oh, they didn't give him that head start. They didn't give him the cheeseburgers? Yeah. And of course, this suitcase that he claimed had a bomb just had an old jacket in it. Mm. Only three years later, though, he boarded the same flight while he was still on probation for his 1980 hijacking attempt. Which, how the hell did he get back yeah, on a plane? Who yeah. let his ass back on a plane? Three years later, Again, he's on probation for hijacking It was the 80s, <laughs> a literal man. Plane? It was the 80s. This was a different time yeah, period. You know, there was no, no fly list still. <laughs> they thought it was bad that Maximilian's over there got, right. you know, taped to the seat. This guy got Valiums. He so, was drugged. Right. And he got back on three years later. This time, he waited until the flight was in the air before he told a flight attendant he had a bomb. And demanded to be flown to Afghanistan. The flight landed in Portland shortly after this. <laughs> and Glenn released all of the passengers after a three-hour standoff again with the FBI. Two agents crawled through the cockpit's windows while passengers left the plane from the back exit. And they ended up fatally shooting Glenn. Oh, shit. After he made a serious. sudden move at him. And he was only 20 years old. But Glenn was one of the many imitators of the infamous D.B. Cooper. Again, D.B. Cooper was the airplane hijacker who successfully extorted $200,000 from an airline in 1971 and escaped from the plane by parachute. And to this day, his real identity has never been discovered and nobody knows what happened to him after he jumped out of the airplane. So this guy was only 20 years old, though, yeah, yeah. and had done this twice already. Yeah. Well, second shit. time, Second time, they weren't fucking around. They were no, like, clearly not. You can't, can't pull this twice on us. Wow. Wild, though, right? Yeah, that would have been a totally different 
scenario if this was today. This yeah, happened today. Wow. Now I'm more interested in DB Cooper. We'll have to cover that soon. Let's let's put that yeah. on the list. I think okay. we, we need to cover that one soon. I agree. I need Very to know more about this individual who successfully hijacked a plane, yeah. got a quarter million dollars, and then jumped out and never to be seen again. Yeah, that's crazy, honestly. It is. But that is where we're going to wrap up today's episode for Dumbest Criminals Part 3. Until next time we go into Part 4, mm -hmm. let us know if there's any dumb criminals you know of out there. Maybe you've come across and yeah. you're scrolling on TikTok or Instagram. Yeah, you can actually submit them to our request form. That's and we a great will place keep to an eye out for them. Because, yeah, I want to keep this series going. I do too. It's fun. It's it's nice for us that we cover so many heavy, heavy topics. And I'm not going to lie, during my pregnancy, that has been difficult to cover, especially more sensitive cases. Last week was very difficult. Yeah. And so we really appreciate you guys being open to different types of content here and having some fun with us yeah. because we really needed it mentally. Yeah. Just have a good time here. It's nice to like kind of visit some of the, I guess, a lighter side of true crime. You know? Yeah. Where it's just dumb, just dumb yep. people doing dumb stuff. Yep. So, mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. would you say is the dumbest Ooh. out of the group today? Okay, let's review what we have. Okay, what are our options? We have the two burglars who stole the empty safe. We have the considerate lawnmower thief. Oh, mm. we have the guy that broke into the tavern. Right. Uh, had his own party. We have the Legoland driver's license dude. <laughs> that was nice. I don't know, man. Max Barry though. Max <laughs> Barry is. He might Flipped be taking down. the taking the crown today. And then we have the store owner who got the couches back from those two thieves. We have the savage woman threw the boyfriend's ashes, his mother, into wow. yeah, that's pretty the hmm. water, or the woman who burned the wrong car, or this Glenn Trip individual, DB hmm. Cooper Who's imitator. The dumbest. I'm gonna say for me, it's the two that were stealing the safe. Yeah, that was it's, it's honestly, that was stupid. yeah, I mean, mm. but I don't know if you look at it from a stupid perspective, I think Max, just stupid, but the lawnmower, dude, I mean, I don't on know camera the whole time. I think he's, but he got away. Nice. So he's clearly not that stupid. So yeah. Yeah. How dumb can he be if he's still free? I think Max <laughs> is the dumbest criminal here. Do you? Yeah. I kind of think this last guy. Glenn Tripp? Yeah, Glenn Tripp. He's pretty dumb. Try, doing it twice. Yeah. And his demands were so high. Assassinate my boss. That's pretty stupid. He really thought that was going to work. He lowered his demands pretty quick, though. Yeah. Three cheeseburgers. <laughs> and a getaway, getaway vehicle and a head start. Head start. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to get hungry He's on the like, way home. He's <laughs> like, I'm going to need those cheeseburgers for fuel <laughs> while I drive, while I'm running from the FBI. Mm. I guess, yeah, I don't know, though. The dudes with the safe. That's, pretty that's honestly iconic. Like, <laughs> break into a store, steal an empty safe. That's, that's amazing. But they got away too. So <laughs> yeah, they also did get away. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to vote for Glenn Trip. Okay, I go Max. You go the safe empty dudes. safe yep. burglars. All right, let us know what you think in the comments below. But make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, follow us on Spotify. I really appreciate it. Make sure you check out MileHireMerch.com yes. for all the goodness. And we will see you guys next time with another episode of Lights Out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, another episode of Mile Hire Podcast. Sorry, I just uh, brain switched into Lights Out there for a minute. Mm, but yeah, work. if you want to check out Lights Out, um, feel free to check out Lights Out while you're at it. Wow, you just planned that to uh, plug it. Yeah. And we'll see you on the next session. See you on the next <laughs> <laughs> Well, we'll see you guys next time. Till then, keep taking your mind a mile higher. <laughs>